<laughs> we should be back on, folks. We're on the air. All right. Well, Marner's going to let me make a video. Isn't that exciting? Okay, we're going to title this one The Blood of the Innocents. We're going to talk a little bit about abortion. There's lots of things we can talk about. But this is important, and this is probably going to be one of the final problems in the world. Of course, all the scripture is taken from the Son of Man Bible, which you can find over at biblesupport.com. He's for, uh, from Esword and The Word and My Sword modules I've put together. I continue to edit those and update them regularly. So if you haven't gotten yours updated lately, be sure to download the Son of Man Bible from biblesupport.com or wordmodules.com. And the Father's been laying this thought heavy on my heart for quite a while now. And, uh, it's the burning of infants to Molech or Milcom, the idea of child sacrifice or infanticide, which would include abortion. It's the shedding of innocent blood. It's been a sin on this planet for thousands of years. Today it's manifested as abortion all over the planet. It's still blood, lust, sacrifices to the same demons. I mean, those demons haven't gone anywhere. No human has a right to murder an unborn baby or an infant. Yahuwah keeps these babies in heaven. They will be presented as evidence in the heavenly court on Judgment Day. Once you conceive a life, that life will be accounted for. The Associates for Biblical Research recently published an article related to this matter, and I will try to include that link in the description box below this video. I hope I don't forget that. I'll try really hard not to forget Believers today don't normally see this subject talked about in the New Covenant Scriptures, but it is there in Acts 15, verse 20 and 29, and in Acts 21, 25. Acts 15, 20 says, But we write to them that they must keep away from the pollution of idols, from sexual immorality, and from what is suffocated, and from blood. Well, you see, that's talking about, when it talks about the pollution of idols, it's already talking about immediately. You know they're talking about pagan worship services in those pagan temples and high places that were found all over the Middle East, a lot of them in Canaan. Verse 29 says that you turn away from things sacrificed to idols, blood, things suffocated, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, it shall be well with you. Farewell. Acts 21.25 says, But concerning the ethno-linguistic nations who have believed, we wrote and gave the instructions that they should keep themselves from things sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what is suffocated, and from sexual immorality. So they stated this three times in the book of Acts. And that Greek word for sexual immorality there is pornea, which stands for, of course, pornography, or sexual deviance. And, you know, in those pagan worship centers, the cultic prostitution was the norm at these uh, pagan worship services. Things sacrificed to idols refers to those pagan ritual sacrifices. And these were, they had temples, very simple temples sometimes, very elaborate temples sometimes, but they, any old high place they could find, they were uh, sacrificing. And it included child sacrifice, infant sacrifices, infanticide. We have simply sanitized it today in the form of abortion in these uh, so-called clean clinics. The blood refers to the pagan rituals of drinking sacrificial blood, or those people sometimes would cut themselves trying to get their gods to do things like you would find in, uh, what is it, 1 Kings 18, Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal. What is always stymied me is the reference to things strangled. That's what most of the translations say, strangled. But it actually should say suffocated. That's a better meaning of that word. Has anyone ever tried to strangle an ox or a sheep or a goat? It's not common to strangle animals. It's uh, not easy, and it would be a lot easier and more efficient probably to suffocate an animal than to try to strangle it. Unfortunately, what I believe this term is referring to in these New Covenant scriptures is the murder of infant children by suffocation in preparation for sacrifice to a demon idol, like Molech, where they quite often dropped them down alive, but they might have had their hand over their mouth to stifle their cries while they're taking them up to this idol which sometimes that would kill them. You know, they would deprive them of oxygen and suffocate their babies on the way up to sacrifice them. And so, of course, this terminology would then include some form of ancient abortion, which is very similar to suffocating uh, a fetus. The ethno-linguistic nations that Paul and Silas were winning to Yeshua or Yahusha were coming out of these pagan worship experiences. 
They needed to hear the simple instructions from the apostles to refrain from perverted idol worship services and infanticide. It was very common, even just 2,000 years ago, it was very, very common. Many cultures had child sacrifice. Children were disposed of at will, very similar to what we see in the abortion industry today. It's just heartbreaking to me to see this mentioned in the book of Acts from the first century. It's heartbreaking what's going on today. If you don't believe my interpretation of Acts 15 and 21, then let's look at what the apostles wrote up as instructions for early believers in a document that became known as the Didache. This is from the first century. Here's what Didache uh, chapter 2 verse 2 says. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not corrupt children. You shall not fornicate. You shall not steal. You shall not practice magic. You shall not mix poison. Uh, that sounds like big pharma. You shall not murder a child, whether by abortion or by killing it once it is born. Can you imagine that? Those were instructions directly from the original apostles. And uh, I did find a, a, a version of this didache that I was able to put on Esword. It says some of those things slightly differently. Let me read that one. This is right out of the Esword module. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not corrupt boys, you shall not be sexually promiscuous, you shall not steal, you shall not practice magic, you shall not engage in sorcery, you shall not abort a child or commit infanticide, you shall not covet your neighbor's possessions. That's some pretty good wisdom. And that's what the Didache was. It was a lot of the apostles' wisdom, which, of course, they learned from the master, Yahushua himself. And folks, you'd think that after 2,000 years of faith in Yahushua and the ministry of Ruach HaKodesh, that we would have grown way past having to deal with sexual immorality, idol worship, infanticide, or abortion. Our postmodern societies are no better than the ancient pagan societies that the Israelites faced in Canaan and all around the Middle East. The shedding of innocent blood is what brought down the ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah. The very same issues of sexual deviance and abortion will bring down America and every nation on earth in these last days. Make no mistake, the Father knows what's going on. Psalm 33, 11 through 22 says, The plans of Yahuwah stand forever, the plans of his heart for all generations. Blessed is the nation whose divine one is Yahuwah, the people whom he has chosen as his own inheritance. Yahuwah looks from heaven, he sees all the people. From the place where he lives, he looks down on all who live on the earth. He who shapes the hearts of them all observes their deeds, all their deeds. No king is saved by a vast military force. A warrior is not saved by his great strength. A horse is false security for victory. In spite of his great strength, he cannot rescue. See, Yahuwah's eye is on those who fear him, on those who count on his covenant faithfulness, to deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in times of famine. We wait for Yahuwah. He is our help and our shield. Our hearts rejoice in him, for we trust in his set-apart name. Let your covenant faithfulness, Yahuwah, be with us as we put our hope in you. So we pray every day that the Father would pour out a spirit of conviction of sin upon every human on earth, if there's going to be an end-time revival or another great spiritual awakening, why will we see Judgment Day as portrayed in the end-time biblical prophecies? Judgment Day is what's coming, folks, and it doesn't appear to be a great revival in the end. Not that I've been able to find in the scriptures that much. Currently, we see no hint of repentance by humans on this planet. Civil governments around the globe continue to support the murder of unborn innocents. The Father is watching as his anger grows. The angels are keeping track for the court records. The cutoff day is rapidly approaching. I hope everyone repents of their sins today. This is the day of salvation. You may not get another chance. Turn your life over to Yahushua HaMashiach today. His blood is sufficient to cover our bloody hands. Wash us clean, Father. Just pray for everybody that they pay attention to your word, Father. Rededicate ourselves to you, Father. Cleanse us of these kinds of sins, sexual deviance, sexual immorality, Father, infanticide, abortion, all this murderous stuff that's going on. Includes all that homosexual and lesbian stuff, and transgender and all that stuff. It's all included. Sexual immorality is sexual immorality. It's all a level playing field. We are all sinners. We've all come from somewhere. But Yeshua, Yahusha, HaMashiach can set each and every one of us free. 
So trust him today for that. So we'll talk to you again soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.